Thank you. Thank you. It is wonderful being here. <laughs> Anybody got a light, a match, a light? Give me, please. Just a light, brother. Thank you. Throw it, drummer. I got it. Got to be careful with these motherfucking matches. the first time I had an orgasm because we didn't come when you when you first started jacking up you didn't come right you had that funny feeling <laughs> first time I came I thought something was wrong with me Jack I said oh shit look what you done done to me an hour later I was back Jack <laughs> can you do it again and I just like to have fun because fucking is just fun. I mean, it ain't nothing dirty about it. I mean, because I don't want to fan anyone because anybody in here don't know what I'm talking about fucking. And I thought, you know, when you're in show business, you like to get pussy. Because I remember what it was like in Peoria before I got into show business. You remember the great pussy drought of the 50s? I got caught up in that motherfucker boy. <laughs> it was me. I discovered men, like we masturbate. See, women, women don't ever mess to nothing. <laughs> women like to fuck as much as we do. But they don't confess to the shit. They always be cool. You no, I don't want to fuck. <laughs> but they go home, have all that electrical equipment and shit. I can't come behind one of them long things on my nothing. I remember I discovered masturbating in the tub. I was about nine, Jack. Was... See, that's when you had to jack off like this. You had two fingers. <laughs> right, that's it. Hey. I'm on to something here. <laughs> Should I bet dad don't know about this shit, man? <laughs> they couldn't keep my ass out the tub after that. <laughs> One of these motherfucking hands, this hand here, Jack, just got distorted. <laughs> my father go, boy, what the fuck is wrong with your hand? Gertrude, come here. When I started in show business, I always thought it was cool because I went out with a Playboy bunny. I said, this is it. I have reached the top. Playboy bunny pussy. Right. And this lady, she took me to this beautiful apartment. It was like, just like shit you never see in your life. One of them kind of apartments where they say, if I don't get the pussy, I can fuck this couch. And we were sitting down, eating and shit, having a little midnight snack. And she was cool. She was luscious, man. She was talking to me. She said, you know that act you do about the little kids? I said, yeah. I said, you like that? She said, yeah. Would you mind talking like a little kid? Uh, now? She said, yeah. I said, oh, shit, that's my act. I, you really? You know, little kid? You mean when? I look, okay. Dave, how you doing? You mean like this? And she said, yeah. <laughs> and she start taking shit off. And I start talking like a little kid. And the more she would take off, the younger I would get. <laughs> By the time she got to her panties, I was on the floor talking about <laughs> I ended up in the womb. <laughs> she gave birth to me about 9.30. <laughs> All this shit happened before I was married. Of course, darling, you know that. <laughs> because we men, we do not cheat. <laughs> I do 
not cheat. I will fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling. But I will never confess. Don't fuck around and confess. My wife can ask me, that. dear, no. Didn't this fuck? No, goddammit. No, I don't. God, no. But I saw you was in. No, I was not in the I had my dick out. I was not fucking nothing. Now don't be, no. I don't give a fuck. It's 10 years ago. Did you? No. I was not fucking her. I told you that 10 years ago, goddammit. Being married, that's hard fucking work. I'm real happy. But the shit is hard. I mean, God damn. I mean, it's hard enough living by yourself. But living with somebody all the time. I know women got to feel this way too. Every day the same motherfucker. In and out. Motherfucker don't look so good all the time. You still got to be looking at them motherfucker. And women like to be touching you all the time. God damn bitch, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> Just hit the fuck out of my face. <laughs> yeah, I love you, but God damn. It's <laughs> something about when the pussy just there. You know, I like when the women, she said, put something new in the life. Yes, take a leave of absence. <laughs> Come back in six months. Then we can fuck good. <laughs> and I try, like, I try to deal on the emotional level and shit. It's real hard. It's, I, it's real, just, this shit is hard, like, expressing your feelings. Feelings are a bitch. Right? Like, women always talk about heartache and shit, how heartache, and they cry and shit. You don't know how we really feel when you fuck our hearts up. If you could see our ass, men be fronting it off, but that shit be. <laughs> I mean, we go out in the bars and talk shit. Like, yeah, man, hey, bro, yeah, shit, yeah, that bitch got man, fuck it, you know. Uh, yeah, bring me a fifth of anything, shit. Mm. And you try not to call them up, right? You ever get to that? The man, you're trying to, I ain't gonna call this. I, I, the... I went to Arizona State Penitentiary. To do a film with Gene Wilder, right? We do a film called Stir Crazy. And it was really strange because it's 80% black people in there. And you say, well, why is that strange? Because there are no black people in Arizona. I mean, they bust motherfuckers in. And I was there. And I've always said the black man been fucked over. You know the revolution, motherfucking whitey, motherfucking fuck over us. We got a good heart. We nice people. Just get a bad break. And I was there six weeks. And I talked to some of the brothers there. Thank God we got better pictures. I said to him, I said, why'd you kill everybody in the house? <laughs> they was home. <laughs> I met a motherfucker named Jabo. He has a sense, hear the sense, triple life. <laughs> How do you do triple life? That means if he die and come back, he got to go to penitentiary. Right there, be say, fuck kindergarten. Get your little ass on in the penitentiary, motherfucker. You know what you did last time you was here. <laughs> and Gene Wilder always liked to jump in the middle of them. Hi, right, guys, how you doing? <laughs> I said, Gene, bring your ass out of there. Man. <laughs> what do you think they do to us, Rich? I say, fuck us. <laughs> we would be pussy on the hoof. Gene told me, said, well, I'm not homosexual. I said, they ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> they don't fuck you because they like it. <laughs> I said, I just wanted to see that look on your face. 
I just can't imagine two old big greasy ass murderers fucking each other. <laughs> hey, hey, baby, you gonna let me get some tonight? <laughs> yeah, daddy, go for yourself. <laughs> you tell anybody, I'll kill you. Because <laughs> you gotta admit, an asshole look like an asshole. Right, I don't care how you dress it up. It's still an asshole. You can ask anybody, say, what does that look like? Yeah, asshole. Pretty asshole, but it's an asshole. <laughs> Forty years, I'd fuck something. <laughs> so you want my grits? That's the cold blooded part. I say, I mean, motherfucker, you don't teach nobody nothing. Mexicans in the prison, the Mexicans, everybody got gangs, right? The Mexicans got the bachugas, the menjins, the tattoos and shit. Motherfucker, Mexican had a tattoo. They don't wear no shirts in prison. The Mexican don't wear no shirt. They even tattoo them on. And the white boys, they got the Ku Klux Klan and the Nazi party. This is what they be living with with each other. They all criminals. And they can't unite. Right, and, and the black brothers, they got the mild mouths and the Muslim, the double Muslim. Them's the motherfuckers you don't want to fuck with. The double Muslim. That means the motherfucker's been here twice. He can't wait to get back to Allah. And he want to take eight or nine motherfuckers with it. As he cuts your throat, he be hollering, Salam Alekum. Pass me a loaf of bread. I met a dude, he was doing. I went to Africa. I went to the motherland, find my roots. Right? 700 million black people. Not one of them motherfuckers knew me. I looked in every phone book in Africa. I didn't find one goddamn prior. Only one familiar name I saw was J-Bo Walker. I called him up. They said he was in Arizona. So I went to the motherland. It was so beautiful. Just seeing black people in charge of everything. I'm talking about from the wine old to the president. It was black. Blue black. <laughs> Original black. The kind of black where you go, black. <laughs> and landing at the airport in Nairobi, man, just fill your heart up. You see, you look at all the black people. And you realize that people are the same all over the world. Because people in Africa fuck over your luggage just like people in New York. <laughs> what was funny was seeing white folks walk down the street and look for each other. <laughs> And it's great to walk down the street in Africa because every black person in Africa reminded me of somebody here. <laughs> they did, man. I was like, that motherfucker look like Joe Frazier. <laughs> I say, God damn. <laughs> right, and he'd be the president of the bank and shit. You go, that mother Joe Frazier. <laughs> if Joe Frazier could see this motherfucker, he wouldn't come out of retirement. And you see rhinos that I knew here, I see them in, they be diplomats and shit. Right, you go, what is a rhino? Look at this motherfucker! That's what he's supposed to be. And you see the women are the most beautiful, elegant people, like Vogue magazine and shit be trying to work on that shit for years just to just stand like these people, right? And, and you be looking, it's just, my eyes was full. Jack, I was going, God damn, look at this shit. And cause in my mind, like most people, in my mind, I figured, 
Africa, a lot of jungle and shit. You know, Tarzan. <laughs> Tarzan wouldn't last a week in Africa. <laughs> or they probably just call him old crazy white man. They go, they say, where is Tarzan? You mean the crazy white man? <laughs> yeah, hey, back up in the trees with the bamboos. <laughs> say, is Jane with him? No, she horn in Nairobi. And you go into the jungle like in the country, man, I'm telling you, it's, this, it's something like to drive around and see all these motherfucking animals and shit in person. Because it ain't like at the zoo, they be bullshitting us at the zoo. Right? Because you get into the jungle for real, it's the real deal. You look at a rabbit and some tell you, don't fuck with that rabbit. Because a rabbit have a different attitude, like they know you don't belong there, right? Is it? Roll the window up, dear. Well, it's just a rat. Fuck you, roll the motherfucking window up. I ain't never seen no rabbit look at me like that. Right? Because we go to the zoo, we all go to the zoo, fuck with the lions and shit, right? Because you see the lion can't get out and shit, is it? Hey, lion. Hey, motherfucker. But when you see a pride of lions, about 20 of them motherfuckers hanging out, they have a different attitude like the lion in the bush. Like, <laughs> yeah, get your ass out the car. <laughs> Bring the camera too. Because we're going to eat all that shit. saw like the lioness, the women do the hunting, right? I saw the lioness, three of them hunt down a Cape Buffalo. Now the Cape Buffalo is the baddest motherfucker on four legs, except for these bitches chasing it. <laughs> and the lioness, they be signaling each other, man, and you know they can't talk. And them motherfuckers ease around like that, and one of the buffaloes saw the lioness in, and tipped away from the rest of her. Didn't say shit and tip right into these other two bitches, right? There. Oh shit. And went to turn back and they was on his ass and broke everything. Motherfucker didn't have time to y'all help. He said, huh. And you know in the movies how you see the buzzers and shit circling overhead? These motherfuckers drove up in a truck. Jump down, uh, keep the motor running. We won't be long. I saw two cheetah, man. They went after some gazelle. Two cheetah. I mean, these are some fast men. It seemed like they were talking to each other. Because they was in the bush and the gazelles were over there. And the cheetah said, you want to go get these man like me? Saying, oh, man, they're too close. Yeah. Wait till they get another hundred yards. So how's the wife and family? Yeah, everything all right? Yeah, well, tour season gonna open up. Might be able to get us something this year. Shit, I got an arm last year. Yeah, they far enough now. You ready? <laughs> and the gazelle heard the mother said, ah! And the other, other gazelle said, run, I can't. I can't move. Tough shit. And one of the gazelles put a move on the cheetah made him mad too. And the cheetah couldn't stop fast. So he fell over 800 times. I got up, I'm gonna get you, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you got away this time. I'm gonna remember your ass so. off. <laughs> Make me look bad in front of my friend. I remember I did something brave once, I think. I worked at a mafia club in Youngstown, Ohio. Right? And I didn't know nothing about the mafia. Because to me, like, my father was the baddest motherfucker I ever met. Because my father could do something in the wintertime few human beings could do. He could go out and lift the hood up on the car and put his hands under there and do some shit. And it'd be cold. I said, this is a bad motherfucker. My dad is a motherfucker. So mafia didn't mean shit to me. And we worked. 
And they wasn't going to pay us. I worked with a lady named Satin Down, a black. Man, I think Duke Ellington had written a tune about her. She was beautiful, man. She was 60 then. No, but she was fine. Lean on and have shit on her, man. She, she was crying. I said, what's the matter? She said, they're not going to pay us. I said, not going to pay who? <laughs> oh, motherfucker going to pay me? Well, no, I was raised better than that shit. And I had a blank pistol. Now, dig how ignorant I was. I was 19, man. I didn't know I had a blank cap pistol. I bust in the office. Like, you motherfuckers, get off the money. <laughs> Doing my best black shit, you know. Because that usually scared the average white motherfucker, you know. <laughs> you know how it is when you do something and the motherfucker just don't. You can feel there's something wrong. And you got the gun. <laughs> and you're saying, there's something wrong. There's some look missing in this motherfucker's face. You know, and I'm sure that them men are still there today laughing. Because he started laughing. He just looked at me. Ah, this fucking kid. Hey, come here, come here. Hey, wait a minute, come here. Hey, Tony. Wait a minute, come here. Do it again, Rich. Put the gun up. Again. Hey, Tony, stick up. Ah! Come here, you fucking kid. Come here. Like, ah, get a pair of gooseys on him. Ah, oh, you fucking kid. Ah, fucking stick up. Ah, come here, you fucking kid. Ah, Tony, was you scared? Ah! Ah, what a pair of zingies. Ah, fucking. They always say some shit you don't know what it is. You got a pair of things say, ah, I got to get it. Hey, pay everybody off. Hey, hey, look. Hey, pay them off. Look at This fucking kid. I ain't got a fucking kid. They always want to be grabbing you. Come on. Tell me fucking kid. Uh, grabbing your face. Come here. Come here. Hey, you want something to eat? And they let everybody go, but they made me stay. I was sort of like a pet. And the motherfucker kept trying to feed me shit. Hey, you want a little strudy? Hey, Paolo, fix up some frona, okay? Sprinkle a little steeny on it. Fry it up. They like fried foods, okay? It's fucking kid. Huh? Come here. <laughs> hey, Paolo, yeah, get a mozzini, man. Huh? Just look at the field, fucking kid. Huh? And that's some goosies, huh? <laughs> and then they start telling mafia stories. And mafia stories consist of motherfuckers that died funny. <laughs> that they killed. And if you ain't killed nothing bigger than a cockroach, that shit start worrying you after a while. <laughs> hey, sister, these motherfuckers are serious. So let me tell you, man. Hey, remember, hey, follow, remember me. And ladies and gentlemen, from Tupelo, Mississippi, Mudbone. You know, now, I know that boy. See, he fucked up. See, that fire got on his ass. And it fucked him up upstairs. Fried up what little brains he had. Because I remember the motherfucker he could make a motherfucker laugh at a funeral on Sunday, Christmas Day. But you know what happened? He got some money. That's what happened to him. He got some money. Then Miss Mill Cramps and shit was gone. He said, fuck it. Went all the way crazy. Shit, now me, I'm still hungry. See, I'm going to be out here four days and six months. You know, I remember, see, nobody remember when I started in show business. I gave Mom's Maple her break. Mom's was an ugly child. I told her, I said, girl, you ought to go into comedy. She's about two then. And she still had that funny voice. I'm the one starter. So, I 
watch this, boys. The record, he used to come by and give me a dollar. Yeah, 50 cents down. He was all right, you know. He would never let me five, though, you know. He ain't let me have them twos and fuse, you know. So I felt for the boy. I went over there talking to him. And he ignorant. Because I sit down and talk to him. And he don't let him get none of that powder in his nose. That's like trying to talk to a baboon's ass. I talked to the boy seven days and seven nights. He was still on the same subject. Where can I get some more? So I talked to him, you know. I said, boy, why don't you, why don't you do something with yourself? Said, Since religion ain't your thing, Maybe you take up ballet. <laughs> I told him, I said, because you're going to be black a long time. <laughs> so you might as well enjoy yourself because there ain't many black motherfuckers out there doing it. <laughs> said, don't stop now. Said, don't lighten up, tighten up. <laughs> That's what I told him. And he must have listened to me because he, he was going to register to vote. I knew he was sick then. <laughs> See, I lived through hard times before. Like people talking about these as hard times. Hard times was way back. They didn't even have a year for it, just called it hard times. <laughs> it was dark all the time. I think the sun came out on Wednesday. And if you didn't have your ass up early, you missed it. So I happened to be out there one Wednesday, and the sun hit me right in the face. And I grabbed a bunch of it, rubbed it all over myself. Because, shit, I didn't have nothing else. I said, shit, I might as well have some sun on my face. And time went on. And I remember it was Thursday. I said, damn, that sun was a bitch. That's why they didn't want us to have none of it. Because it cheer you up inside, you see. So I got all cheered up. Went out on the deck. Lucinda Bell May. The girl was pretty. Cold black. Looked like a, like a cold black something. A coal black piece of black. It was shining beautiful. Skin, skin was tender, like a baby's butt. Right? Sweet breast smelled like carnation milk. That's how tender she was. I liked her too. She had a little liking to me. Her father was black in her. He was mean. I thought about saying, now listen, should I talk about freebase and what is, or something? And people say, well, no, because then people start doing it. No, let me, I got to talk about what happened to me on freebasing. Freebasing, I freebase about eight months straight. <laughs> My bitch left me, I went crazy. <laughs> but I fell in love with this pipe. <laughs> this pipe controlled my very being. This mother say, don't answer the phone. We have smoking to do. All the pipe is talking about, now come on. Don't put me down anywhere where I might fall. Cause it's two in the morning and it's hard to get one of me. And when I first did it, I knew it was going to fuck me up, but I had to do it. So I just had to be hip. This mother said, you ever tried this? Rich? This motherfucker said, he's going to string me out. This is a dope dealer that need me to get hooked so he can get some free bass. You know what I mean? This dude, he just used to snort a little coke like this. Going. I saw him and he's, I said, what's wrong with you? This motherfucker was talking about, I really free, babe. 
I say, what? What do you mean? He told me he saw Jesus. I say, well, okay. And he said, you do it in women to do it. And that's how he got me. Women will fuck. He said, give something to your old lady, she'll fuck. I should have known if it's my old lady, naturally she going to fuck. I forgot. I thought I was tricking somebody that was giving me pussy. It started out innocently enough. You know, every now and then. Love it. No, no, no. That's what he said. No, no, no. no. Base. Fuck it. Nah. Then pretty soon I noticed I wasn't walking as far away from the pipe as I used to. Because I used to walk, I put the pipe and I go, ha, ah, fuck. Hey, I'd be all out in here and shit. And then motherfuckers that you used to share with you go, hey, ain't you got none of your own shit? I was out one night and we was doing it and a woman said, the fire doesn't last long enough. And we kept trying to get it. I said, what kind of fire do you want? And the dude said, the kind that lasts forever. <laughs> I'm just telling you about a junkie. I was, and I didn't know it. I kept saying, I can quit any time I want to. Finally, one day myself said, when? <laughs> I said, I thought you liked me. You're going to ask me that. And I don't give a fuck when you're a junkie. You will not admit it. You will find excuses to smoke or shoot up or something. You'll be, hey, look. Rich, you got to go to work. Hey, I don't like the way you said that. <laughs> fuck it, I ain't going to motherfucking work. And you go in the room, you lay down and say, you understand, don't you? Then after a while, you start sneaking around. Because I, I have parents. I did at this time. My aunties and shit were still alive. And they loved me. But they wouldn't say nothing to me that was, like, obvious. They, should, they say shit like, oh, you're a chemist, huh, son? <laughs> now, can you move that so we can fix the greens? No, baby, you ain't no junk. No, Lord. Mm -mm. And it's weird because nobody can talk you out of doing shit when you done made up your mind to hurt yourself. Right? Because, like, I'm talking about base nine, and some people going, Yeah, I got to get home to get my shit. Because I would be out and think of an excuse to get home. I would be at the bank cashing a check, and I'm going to say, We have to certify. Never mind. Fuck it. I go in the car, I be no. And the pipe say, you know you're right. <laughs> so then it gets desperate. When the shit gets gloomy, when you've been in the room four weeks and Jim Brown have to visit. And Jim, of all my friends who came in and said, don't do that, but give me a hit. My friend, they tried, and last night something happened that made me think about why it's so weird for me. Motherfucker, we were signifying, and mother said, well, what about that burnt neck? <laughs> and I never thought about, because nobody had ever said nothing. Because I thought I was the only one that noticed I was burnt up. Because my mother just looked like saying, that was a strange tattoo. <laughs> but this motherfucker said, it burnt up, motherfucker. <laughs> and hair growing on it. <laughs> was you burnt? I mean, you know, real signifying. I don't know, like, there's so many, like, white people here. White people never came to see me till I burnt up. I gotta tell you how I burn up, okay? <laughs> I know y'all saying, okay, come on, tell us how I do. 
You promise not to tell. See, I don't want this shit in National Enquirer. Because, like, everybody know how I burn up in their mind. Everybody say, you know, either, yeah. Have you ever heard of a motherfucker burning up Freebasin? Other than me? Now, wait a minute. Nobody else burn up Freebasin. Why do you think it happened to me? I did not burn up Freebasin. I burn up because I quit Freebasin. I lit my arm accidentally. Now here's how I really burn up. Now, everybody know. My friends really know how it happened, okay? Usually before I go to bed, I have a little milk and cookies. <laughs> no, I do. And one night, I had that low-fat milk and that pasteurized shit. And I dipped my cookie in and the shit blew up. And it scared the shit out of me. Not the blowing up, but it caught on fire. And you know what? It is weird to catch on fire. I don't know if anybody else in here, you ever been just burn up? It is weird because you go, hey, I'm not in the fireplace. I am fucking burning up. Catching on fire is inspiring. <laughs> they should use it for the Olympics. Because I did the 100 yard dash in about four or six in the underbrush. And you know something I noticed? When you run down the street on fire, people will move out of your way. Right? They don't fuck around. They get the fuck out your way. Except for one old drunk, right? He was like, hey, buddy, can we go like... Come on, pal, just slow up, okay? Just a little off the sleeve, what is it? And I got to the hospital. You can really tell when you fucked up when the doctor goes, ah! Holy shit. Why don't we just get some coleslaw and serve this up? What is that? I was in the hospital. I had tubes and shit in my nose. IV in my arm. Steam was coming off my body. Brother come in, want an autograph. Come on. Hey, Rich. Hey, bro. Say, <laughs> Red. How about this last autograph? <laughs> but I thank God. I do. I say, thank you, God, for not burning my dick. people, a lot of people, strange people said, God was punishing you. No. If God wanted to punish my ass, he would have burnt my dick. When the fire hit, my dick went to work. I said, emergency! Piss, come, do something! Don't let the fire get to the balls! my chest was hollering, help! And my dick said, fuck you, go for yourself! Spit! I'm protecting the balls! You know, 
in the hospital, you can tell when you fucked up, when your dick don't want to move. Your dick say, just let me lay someplace. I, no, don't move me. I don't cry. You sick in the motherfucker, Jack. You, I mean, nurses sit all on your face to give you the temperature, right? Time into temperature, Mr. Pryor. Come on. Pussy, I, I don't know. I remember the first day my dick got hard. Motherfucker sound like Al Jarreau in the wind. Like the doctors are amazing, but there was a brother that works with the uh, burn people. People that work with burn people amaze me. He goes, I don't know if I can do it. I mean, really, because they work with people be fucked up. And this man was great. His name was Larry Murphy. And he used to put me in these tanks where they have to wash you off. You know, because the first three days, your skin don't feel shit. So you, you feel like, it's fine. <laughs> and Jim 